quite possibly the most jaw-dropping result in WrestleMania history. The Undertaker streak ends at the hands of Brock Lesnar. The looks on the faces of those in attendance told us everything. Nobody saw this coming. Our next match takes us to the greater Bay Area of Northern California and WrestleMania 31 in 2015. Seth Rollins had been on top of the world ever since he decided to leave the shield behind to do the bidding of the authority. This move paid off instantly as he'd capture the Money in the Bank briefcase in July of 2014. Rollins was untouchable, protected by those in power and with the knowledge that at any moment he could turn that briefcase into the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. All seemed to be well within the ranks of the authority, but the harmony would not last long. Randy Orton, who had been the authority's top hand until Rollins joined the ranks, didn't seem so happy with the favoritism his former rival was now enjoying. This would come to a head with Rollins attacking Orton following a tag team match, connecting with his vaunted stomp to make it clear that their association was now over. The Viper was furious, attempting to get revenge, but never quite finding it. Another stomp from Rollins would force Orton out of action for a few months, with Rollins bragging about his actions the entire time. But at Fastlane in February of 2015, Orton would make his return following a six-man tag featuring Rollins, delivering RKOs to everyone who got in his way. But as luck would have it, Rollins would manage to escape unharmed. Orton made it clear he wanted one thing, and one thing only, Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. Orton wanted to show the authority they made a huge error in backing Rollins instead of Orton, and he was going to make an example of their new golden boy. The pressure's on. Can you humble Seth Rollins in front of an enormous WrestleMania audience, or will this legend be the one you can't kill? The Stomp meets the RKO. Next. And Rollins struggled early to take command of the match, mirroring the struggle for power the two had while both associated with the authority. Orton was all business. He knew that Rollins was dangerous, and he wasn't going to make any mistakes just trying to show off. Rollins, on the other hand, wanted to make his mark on the event, and he knew that a victory over Orton would send a message to the entire WWE roster. This need to make a statement almost cost Rollins when Orton followed up a drop kick with an attempt at the RKO. 
Was Rollins' arrogance going to cost him? Did he respect Orton's ability at all? It was Orton, though, who'd make the next mistake. Chasing Rollins around the ringside area and back in, where Rollins set him up for a devastating hot shot on the ropes. Just like that, Rollins had neutralized Orton's offense and looked ready to pour it on further. What adjustments would Orton have to make now that his RKO had failed him? And would he be able to make them in the moment against Rollins? try for another RKO, knowing that the quick strike would be the end of Rollins whenever it hit. Every time Orton seized control, those two goons in Rollins' security would try and distract Orton, or even outright interfere. With the backing of the authority, officials were hesitant to disqualify Rollins, or even have his security removed. With Rollins temporarily halted, Orton would look to remove Rollins' security from the equation himself. Was Orton making a mistake by leading Rollins to recover? While we all pondered these questions, Seth Rollins provided the answer by wiping Orton out with a breathtaking suicide dive. Orton had squandered his advantage in the match for now.
put Seth in a bad spot and backed into the corner looking to deliver his infamous punt kick. But like they had already multiple times, Rollins security ran back into the ring where they'd both eat RKO's for their trouble. Once again, Rollins took advantage of the distraction, ceasing all of Orton's pressure with a stomp. The same stomp that had taken Orton out of action for months. Made another attempt at the RKO as he had done throughout the match. But then, in a moment that will play in highlight reels forever, Randy Orton unleashes possibly his greatest RKO ever to stop Seth Rollins in his tracks. The Viper never looked better, 
expertly setting up his prey to make one wrong move so he could strike from, that's right, out of nowhere. Randy Orton's perseverance allowed him to overcome stifling three against one odds. And despite being unable to land the RKO on multiple occasions, when the moment presented itself, he fully took advantage. Orton now able to truly show the authority that they had backed the wrong guy all along. Doubly satisfying. And Rollins' master plan had crumbled. He'd now lived forever in WrestleMania highlight reels for all the wrong reasons. Surely there was nothing that could salvage this night for Seth. This was Randy Orton's night, and the only thing people would remember from this event would be that RKO. Nothing was gonna change what Orton had done to Seth Rollins.